Sweden and neighboring Finland asked to join the alliance after watching Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine. A defense pact that will provide Australia with nuclear-powered attack submarines. More and more countries have started forming and joining new alliances. Countries like Finland have joined NATO and Sweden is next in line. AUKUS has been created and Australia wants to purchase nuclear-powered submarines. So what drives countries to ally with each other? There are two main perspectives, the realist perspective and the liberalist perspective. The realist perspective is that countries make alliances in response to threats. They will either make alliances against the threat or instead ally with it. But how do countries consider which country is a threat? There are four factors. The first one is to look at the power of a country. This means the total resources that the country has and that it can use. For example, its population, its technological, industrial, military capabilities, etc. The second one is proximity. So how near is a country to yours? European countries see Russia as a more significant threat than China. Russia is much closer to Europe than China is. Countries like Brazil don't see Russia as such a significant threat compared to how Poland sees Russia. This is because the ability to project power declines with distance. Nearby countries pose a bigger threat than faraway countries. The third one is the offensive capabilities of a country. So if your country has a lot of military power that it can use for offensive purposes, then it would be seen as a bigger threat than countries with less military capabilities. And the last one is offensive intentions. So the more that a country is perceived to be aggressive or expansionist, then the more likely it is to make other countries ally against it. So if your country has bad intentions, other countries will see you as a threat. Once a country is perceived as a threat, the other countries can choose to balance or bandwagon. When countries balance, they join or create alliances to oppose the threatening country. This is very logical. Countries that appear threatening to others will make those countries ally against it to avoid being dominated by it. So strong countries have to avoid appearing aggressive because it will encourage others to balance against it. When countries bandwagon, it's the opposite. They instead choose to ally with the threatening country. They do this to avoid being dominated by it. In this case, strong countries that appear aggressive and potentially dangerous are instead rewarded because the more threatening you are, the more countries will ally with you because they don't want to be attacked by you. So countries have to figure out what other countries are going to do because the policies that are appropriate to one situation can backfire in the other. For example, if you act aggressively, in a world where countries are balancing, countries will oppose you even more. But in a bandwagoning world, countries will ally with you. However, if you act non-threatening, and not aggressive, which is the recommendation so that countries don't balance against you, in a bandwagoning world, this behavior can make allies defect and join the side of the more threatening country, because those countries want to protect themselves from being attacked by it. So which one do you think is more likely, countries balancing against the threat or bandwagoning with it? You can write your thoughts in the comment section. The other perspective is the liberalist perspective, which is that ideology makes countries ally with each other. Basically, if you're a liberal democracy, you make alliances with other democracies. If you're a communist country, you make alliances with other communist countries. Some reasons for this might be because allying with similar countries can be seen as a way of defending your political system. If leaders believe that their political system is good, then protecting other countries with that political system 
is good too. And they might also fear each other less, since both countries would be considered to be on the same side, on the side of the good guys. However, the perception of a leader is also important. If a leader believes that ideology determines alliances, he will view similar countries as potential friends and countries with different systems as potential enemies. This might make the leader react positively towards one country and negatively towards another, encourage good relations with one country and opposition with the other, which eventually makes this hypothesis a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you treat countries with a different political system as enemies, this might drive those countries to ally together for their own security. So your assumption becomes correct because you forced it to be correct. However, many believe that security is more important than ideology. Ideology might play a role, but it might not be the main reason for creating an alliance. This perspective is often used by politicians to get public support for their policies. NATO is not simply a geographic alliance. It's a group of countries who stand together because we believe in democracy, in the rule of law, in the defense of human rights, in the values that underpin all of our societies. Instead of explaining an alliance as a geopolitical balancing alliance, they frame it as an alliance of values, values of democracy, peace and freedom against countries that just hate our freedoms. Cooperation among democracies has become more important. And there are also other instruments that countries can use to try to make others ally with them, which are bribery and penetration. Bribery is basically giving economic or military aid to another country. So by showing that you have good intentions and creating a sense of gratitude, the recipient country can become dependent to the donor country and ally with it. However, countries tend to offer aid when both countries have to respond to a common threat. So providing aid is more often the result of alignment rather than a cause for alignment. You have to see what were the common interests that caused the alliance in the first place. Penetration is when a country is able to manipulate the political system of another country. This is when public officials have divided loyalties and used their positions to move their country closer to the other. You might also have lobbying organizations that work to change the decisions and perceptions of a potential ally. And there might also be propaganda used to influence the elite and the public. In recognizing a communist, physical appearance counts for nothing. However, these last two instruments are rather weak motivations for alliances. In some cases, they might make the alliance more effective, but they rarely are the reasons for making the alliance in the first place. So if you want to learn more about this topic, you can check out some of the links on the description. And you can check out some of my online courses on Udemy and Skillshare, where I teach how to edit videos like this one, or you can even learn Spanish. I have a huge 37 hour course in there. So what do you think makes countries ally with each other? You can write your thoughts on the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe. I almost have 1000 subscribers. Thanks for watching.